Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 12th day of April, and it is the middle of the week, and it is Wednesday, 2023, and today's topic is titled Precious Faith, and I was looking back, and uh, today's author is uh, Rick Gravely, and he, uh, I believe he's doing a uh, series of these messages throughout the, the, um, the Baptist Bread this month, and the first one was back on the 5th of April, titled Precious Blood, talking about the precious blood of uh, Jesus, so he had that one, and so now we're going to be going into another one of these uh, messages on this uh, word precious, precious faith, so we had precious blood back on the 5th, and today we'll have precious faith, and see here if there's any um, more of these uh, as we continue through the month, let's see here, so, yep, looks like we have a precious Savior, which will be on the 19th. And then, let me look here and see what other ones we've got here. Let's see if there's, and then uh, a precious stone, which will be on the uh, 26th. So, precious stone. And, so, let's see. So, that looks like that'll be all of them. So, um, I'll have to put these in a uh, special category on the YouTube channel. But if you want to go back and uh, listen to the Precious Blood one uh, by Rick uh, Gravely, uh, that was on the 5th. And today we'll be doing uh, Precious Faith, and then in a few days we'll cover uh, the Precious Savior, amen, and then a Precious Stone, so amen. All right, so these are spread out throughout uh, this month, uh, so praise the Lord for that. So uh, we'll get started on that here in a few minutes, but first I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. If not, well... Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So make sure you get that uh, settled today. Amen. All right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song for the 12th, and it's from 2 Timothy 4.18. So press play, and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. 2 Timothy 4.18. And, and the Lord, Lord shall deliver, deliver me from, from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Right. Amen. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I knew there was one of these songs that had that uh, last amen on it. Praise the Lord. All right, so put that uh, back to yesterday's and do those again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's topic titled Precious Faith for this 12th day of uh, April, Wednesday. And today's author is Brother Rick Gravely. And he is, let's see, go down here and look for his name. What are you? All right, Rick Gravely, and he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Rossville, Georgia. So he writes here, I'll read you the passage first, from Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. All right, so Brother Gravely writes here, Faith in Christ is what births us into the family of God. Amen. So when we trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we get the Holy Spirit, and then we get put into the family of God and become a child of God. Amen. Uh, we have a heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. 
and we have brothers and sisters in Christ as a result of our faith in him. Hallelujah. Amen. It is amazing the kindred spirit we find amongst God's children. Two people from opposite sides of the world can meet, and if they are both believers, there is an instant bond that is formed. Amen. The world doesn't understand this connection because they have not obtained like precious faith. Right? Amen. They sure haven't. So make sure you get that to right. Amen. Uh, we know that there is only one kind of faith. Faith in the finished work of Christ alone. Right? That's true faith. I mean, you can have faith in other things, but uh, it's a vain faith. Right? Amen. So real true faith comes from uh, uh, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ alone. Uh, so, uh, continue on, he writes, How precious it is to be part of the family of God. He has given us the church so we can fellowship with other saints. Right? Amen? So don't neglect the uh, fellowship with the saints. Amen? And make sure we're always going to church and getting fed the word of God and, ch and church and being around other Christians. Because if you try to uh, think you're going to walk uh, with the Lord by yourself, well, you're sadly mistaken and you're going to fall by the wayside so it's good to be in church and to be edified and to have other believers in christ to keep you on the right track amen and of course you have to have that desire to want to live for the lord and serve him and and uh be on the right path amen so um again uh, he has given us the church so we can fellowship with other saints this is where we draw our strength and encouragement uh, those who don't obtain this precious faith do not value the church, right? That's true. Uh, they see no need to gather on a weekly basis with God's people. They are happy living life without it. <laughs> it's not good. So are you happy living life without uh, without that like precious faith and uh, getting fed the word and growing and becoming more Christ-like? Are you just happy being where you're at and you're just happy being saved but you don't care about anything else but yourself and uh not uh wanting to get better and grow in the lord uh, so are you like that if so well better change that uh spirit amen so the true believer is drawn to the church because of his faith in christ he desires to sing the songs hear the teaching and preaching of god's word it is the faith that creates this desire for the saints and the scriptures Dear, uh, dear reader, have you obtained this like precious faith? Hmm, good question. So, have you? Hopefully so. If not, well, today is the day to do that. Amen. All right, so that is the end of the topic, pre precious faith. And so, put that aside, and I'll grab the Daily Strength book, and we'll read today's passage. There is no uh, topic for today, because it is a church night, so... And we are on week 10, Diligence, going through this week. And we have two weeks of this uh, topic here. And today is church night in day 67. And the passage is from Proverbs 22, 29. And it says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Mm, good. So that's the um, church night passage. Amen. And... Uh, Tomorrow will be in another topic uh, for day 68, Thursday, to, uh, titled Take Heed Unto Thyself. So that will be tomorrow's topic. But since we don't do uh, a topic from the Daily Strength book on Wednesdays and Sundays, I'll read you stories from the Fight On uh, book here. And this is Fight On, a collection of stories about those who have pres uh, preserved uh, through uh, hardship and uh, danger. So this is written by Samuel C. Gipp, and today's story is titled, One Man's uh, Charge. So, One Man's Charge. All right, so let me read this to you. It says, During the Tet 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 Offensive of 1968, Communist North Vietnamese uh, regular army troops took the ancient city of Hue, H-U-E, Hue, and murdered thousands of innocent uh, civilians they also excuse me they also prepared uh, intricate defensive bunkers in preparation for the US counterattack they knew would come on February 21st 1968 Delta uh, Co uh, 2D of 
the 50 or 501 uh, 501st uh, 501 uh, 501st of the 101st Airborne Division ran into one of those bunker complexes. It straddled a, a river just outside the city of Hue as the airborne troopers approached the system of trenches and log bunkers, the enemy immediately brought to bear a huge volume of fire on the Americans. Their only hope was to overrun some of the bunkers and dig in. During the heat of the battle, Staff Sergeant Joe uh, Hopper, uh, Hooper, uh, a squad leader, led his men upstream and crossed the river in order to attack the complex from the flank. The attack surprised the NVA and uh, Hooper's squad quickly overran two key bunkers. Mm. As the attack continued, two GIs were wounded. Uh, Sergeant uh, Hooper ran out to get them and was shot in the back, but, he, but never stopped moving. He dragged one soldier to safety and then went back for the other. A medic treated the wounded man, then a uh, Hooper, and uh, then a uh, Hooper and told. Uh, so he, a medic treated uh, the wounded man, uh, then Hooper and told him uh, he need he too needed to be um, medevaced out. Uh, Hooper refused to go and return to his men, who were now pinned down. To break his men out of the helpless position, uh, Sergeant Hooper gathered an armload of grenades and charged a bunker, blowing it up. Then he charged a second and a third. As he ran from one bunker to the next, the explosives, the explosions uh, peppered his back and legs with shrapnel. Suddenly he saw two NVA soldiers heading for the chaplain who had been shot while tending to a wounded G.I., Armed with only his bayonet, Hooper tackled both soldiers and slashed and stabbed at them until they were dead. Then Sergeant Hooper grabbed four uh, more grenades and attacked a series of uh, hooches, or hutches uh, occupied by the, by the enemy. He tossed a grenade into one and then headed for the second before he could toss in a grenade an NVA officer stepped out and drew his pistol. Hooper jumped him and finished him with his bayonet and then blew up the uh, hutch. Uh, from another hutch, uh, a machine gun was tearing into his men. Uh, Hooper grabbed a rifle and headed for it. In went a grenade. Hooper followed the explosion in and opened fire just as two surviving NVA did the same, wounding him yet again before they died. Hooper uh, field-dressed his wound and took a, a breather to recoup. Then, in a mad dash with several other GIs, he broke through the enemy's front line and into their rear. Now six hours into the battle, armed with a rifle, more grenades, and an NVA pistol, he charged a trench that connected all of the bunkers. Once in the trench, he could isolate and destroy each individual bunker. Under cover fire, Hooper charged to the trench and dove in. Down the trench he ran, tossing grenades into the door of each bunker and shooting anyone who ran out. There were now two bunkers left, and all Hooper had was one incendiary grenade. He tossed it into the uh, first opening and shot those who ran out. Then, using only his rifle, he charged the last position and cleared it. Hooper saw an NVA soldier pop out of a spider hole and shot him. Then he spied the, that final enemy bunker, manned by three NVA officers. Hooper shot them, wounding all three. He wanted them alive for inter interrogation. Then he helped his men form a perimeter for the night again refusing to be medevaced out. He wanted to be with his men if the NVA counterattacked that night. The next morning, he was airlifted out. For his actions, Sergeant Hooper received the Medal of Honor. Fight on. Hmm. Uh, that's quite a story there. So, one man's charge. All right. Uh, pretty good story there. Amen. 
All right, so that's the end of uh, today's story. And next time we'll cover this story titled Always Ready to Fight. And so we'll do that one. And then well, maybe we'll do three because there's these are short ones. So maybe we'll do three next time. So do uh, no, all, Always Ready to Fight will be the one I do definitely. And then maybe do uh, these other two here. It's the other, the other two are titled The Human Ladder and then Fist Fighting a Shark. <laughs> That one sounds interesting. Fist fighting a shark. So maybe do those three on Sunday. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So have you ever, have you ever fist fighted a shark? Well, you're going to find out what it's like to fist fight a shark. Okay. So, amen. Oh, so, all right. So it's time to grab the hymn book here and do today's hymn. And I'm not too familiar with this one, so... Nope, 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 didn't want to do that yet. Uh, okay, so. Alright, so I'll make sure this is on repeat. Okay, so. I'll let you listen to Instrumental. Let me give you the title to this one. It's uh, another one on an invitation to salvation. Titled, I am praying for you. And this is hymn 342 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Written by Samuel O. Clough. C-L-U-F-F. And 1837 to 1910 is when uh, he lived. And then Ira D. Sankey, 1840 to 1908. And then we have some stories down here at the bottom. So there's 10 stanzas here. So press play and let you listen to that and see if it's easy to sing along with. And we'll go from there. So here we go. That's what it sounds like. <clears throat> so I'm not even going to try that. So it's a little, little, sounds a little challenging. So I'll read you all ten uh, stanzas here and then I'll read the stories for you. All right. So stanza one, it says, I have a savior. He's pleading in glory. So precious, though earthly enjoyments be few. And now he is watching in tenderness over me. But oh, that my Savior was your Savior too. For you I am praying. For you I am praying. For you I am praying. I am praying for you. Amen. Second stanza. I have a Father. To me he has given a hope for eternity, precious and true. And soon will my spirit be with him in heaven. But oh, that he'd let me bring you with me too. For you I am praying. For you I am praying. I am praying. I am praying for you. Amen. I have a heart in those uh, regions all glorious. Away, far away in that ocean of blue. And there shall it breathe out its music. Melodious. But oh, could I know one was turning uh, or tuning for you, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, I am praying for you. Stanza four, I have a crown and I'll wear it forever, encircled with jewels of heavenly hue, t'was purchased by Jesus, uh, my glorified Savior, but oh, could I know one was purchased for you, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, I am praying for you. Stanza 5, I have a robe, tis resplendent, when in whiteness, awaiting in glory, my wonderful, or wondering view, oh, when I'll receive it, all shining in brightness, dear friend, could I see you receiving one too, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, I am praying for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a rest, and the earnest is given, though now for a time tis concealed from my view, tis life everlasting, 
tis Jesus, tis heaven, and oh, dearest friend, let me meet you there too, for I am praying for I, uh, for you, for I am praying for you, I am praying, I am praying for you, amen. Stanza 7, I have a peace, and it's calm as a river, a peace that the friend of the world never knew. My Savior alone is its author and giver, but oh, could I know it was given to you, for you, I am praying, for you, I am praying, for you, I am praying, I am praying for you. Amen. Stanza uh, 8 says, For you I am praying, for you I am praying, for you I am praying, for you, yes, for you, and soon shall I hear you re your re you rejoicing and saying, uh, Your dear loving Savior is my Savior too, and prayer will be answered, and prayer will be answered, and prayer will be answered for you, yes, for you. And when he's found you, tell others the story, how Jesus extended his mercy to you, then point them away to the regions of glory, and pray that your Savior may bring them there too, for prayer will be answered, for prayer will be answered, for prayer will be answered, t'was answered for you. And then stanza 10, speak of that Savior, that Father in heaven, the harp, crown, and robe which are waiting for you, that peace you possess, and that rest to be given still praying that Jesus may save them like you, and prayer will be answered, and prayer will be answered, and prayer will be answered, t'was answered for you. Amen. So, that is the hymn there, and uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention uh, in this hymn there, uh, things that uh, seemed a little off. Number one was uh, that, uh, not sure if we'll have harps in heaven, I'm sure we'll probably have um, different instruments in heaven maybe to play but no no but we will be singing glory to the lord amen and then that crown uh that we have we'll be casting at jesus feet I'm not sure if he'll let us wear it or not but uh we will cast it at his feet that's why we're given these crowns so we can cast them at jesus feet amen and then he uh wears those crowns so they're uh rewarded for you so you can cast them down to him amen so all right so i wanted to mention those few things um Amen, but uh, good hymn there, for the most part. I am praying for you, so amen. All right, so let me read you these stories here. Three uh, three of them down here. So the uh, first one says, uh, Like a multitude of compositions by Sankey, Bliss Mc, uh, Granaham, uh, Granahan, and more, uh, these lines were discovered as evangelistic uh, teams uh, crisscrossed Europe and the United States. On his first trip to Ireland, Sankey discovered these words in a leaflet, pairing them with only uh, his second original hymn tune in his book, My Life and the Story of the Gospel Hymns. He records the following accounts. So here's the accounts that he records. In Illinois, a minister was asked to visit a dying man, calling upon the man and aware of the hostility he showed to evangelism, the minister noticed an organ in the room and asked if he might, uh, he might sing. With consent, he sang these lines, which pleased the sick man well. Continuing in song, he sang the truths which he had not the courage to mention in conversation. From this, the ill was converted. Amen. And then the next one here. In New York, it touched a couple. The song went directly to the heart of the wife until the next night she was converted, followed immediately by her husband, having just invited friends to a large dancing party. The dance was turned into a prayer meeting. <laughs> wow, <laughs> pretty good. So those are the stories there and the accounts by uh, Sankey there. All right, so let me give you the references. So stanza one, we have Romans 8.34, 1 Peter 1.6, and then Psalm 34.15, and then 2 Corinthians 5.20. Stanza two is 2 Thessalonians 2.16, Titus 3.7, and 2 Corinthians 5.6, 
stanza three is Revelation 14, 2, Psalm 148, 4, and uh, Revelation 15, uh, did I do that? I saw. Yep, so Revelation, uh, where am I at? Alright, yep, so Revelation 15, 3. And then stanza four is Second Timothy four eight, and Second Timothy four eight, and then Romans eight seventeen. Stanza five is Revelation nineteen eight, and uh, Philippians three nine, and then Philippians three nine, and then Daniel twelve three, and then stanza six is Hebrews four nine, First Peter one six, and then First John five eleven. And then stanza 7 is Isaiah 66, 12, uh, Philippians 4, 7, and then Colossians 1, 20. And then stanza 8, we have Romans 10, 10 and Romans 10, 12. Stanza 9 is 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 1 Peter 1, 3, John 1, 29, and 2 Peter 3, 9. And then stanza 10 is 1 John 4, 14, 1 Peter 1, 4, and then John 16, 33. Amen. So that is the end of today's hymn. I am praying for you. So put that aside there for now. And I'll grab the uh, scripture song book. And we'll do yesterday's and today's scripture song. And then we'll wrap it up after that. So, all right. So yesterday was the 11th, Mark 8, 36 37. So here we go. Mark 8, 36 and 37. For what, what shall, shall it profit a man if he shall gain, gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's right. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For his soul, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole? world and lose his own soul for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul for his soul Right, so think about that. All right, now today's Second Timothy four eighteen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We go. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen to whom be glory forever and ever amen to whom be glory forever and ever amen amen <laughs> yes amen Praise the Lord. All right, so that'll be it for today's 
broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song for the 13th and then the topics for the Baptist bread and the daily strength uh, devotional books and then the hymn for tomorrow. And then I'll show you really quick the Baptist bread for next month. I'll uh, give you a quick preview of what the cover of that looks like. And then uh, I'll give you that again at the end of the month. But uh, it's a pretty good cover. Almost as good as uh, uh, the one from uh, last month and this month. Amen. So I'll show you what that looks like here uh, after I give you the scripture song and the, the topics for the uh, devotionals and the hymn. So tomorrow is the 13th. And Jeremiah 7.3 will be the scripture song. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. So Jeremiah 7, 3. And then tomorrow's Baptist bread topic will be titled, An Unwanted uh, Predicament. Shut up. <laughs> okay. So an unwanted predicament. Shut up. And uh, passages are Jeremiah 32, Verses 2b and 3a. Hmm. And tomorrow's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So we'll find out more about this topic tomorrow. Hmm. Sounds like an interesting one. And that's the Baptist bread. And then tomorrow's daily strength topic will be titled for this week, Diligence. It's titled, Take Heed Unto Thyself. And this is day 68, Thursday. So take heed unto thyself, and the passage is 1 Timothy 4.16. Amen. So we should take heed to ourselves, make sure that we're following the Lord and not living after the flesh and doing things we shouldn't be doing. Amen. And then the hymn for tomorrow is titled, Softly and Tenderly. And I think I know this one. I believe we uh, sang it in the hymn, uh, in the uh, church uh, congregation singing so softly and tenderly and this is hymn 343 and another one on the invitation to salvation so amen that'll be tomorrow's hymn and then there is a story for this one so it looks like there's going to be some stories for the next uh, a few here so amen I like when there's stories to these hymns I get to tell you a little bit about these hymns and who who they were written by and all that stuff so amen so that's that and then uh and if you want to get a copy of that book and the Daily Strength uh, Volumes 1-4 through four books, they're available on MelodyPublications.com, where you can order those. Amen. And then the Scripture Song Book and CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's their website. Amen. And they are missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for them. And uh, amen. All right. And then the Baptist Bread. A devotional book. This is the one for last month and this month. But if you order now, you will get this one. It came in the mail yesterday. And this is the cover for uh, May and June. And it's got a church building on the front of the cover. Amen. This is a neat cover here. And then the passage is from Second uh, Peter 3.18. It says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So um, we've got to grow in grace. Amen. It's not something that comes naturally. So you got to grow in it and then grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to know him better and to have a better relationship with him. So amen. And I was uh, looking at this last night and thought it was interesting how it says that. But grow in grace because you got to grow and not just stay stagnant, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in other things and to be more Christ-like. Amen. All right. So, again, that's uh, for May and June, the church there on the uh, cover there. Amen. All right. And if you want to get a copy of uh, the devotional books, uh, they're available to get a subscription going on www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to order and then the fight on book if you want to get a copy of these two books there's two volumes to this and uh, you can probably look it up on the internet that's uh, Samuel C. Gipp is the author and he's written a bunch of books on the King James Bible and why it's the Word of God and the modern uh, translations and stuff and so you can check those out um, look them up on the internet and he's got lots of uh, preaching and teaching on uh, YouTube so amen all right, so that's that fight on book there. And then, of course, the Bible is the first book we should always be getting into, reading it, 
and studying it, the King James Bible, the Word of God, right here. So, amen. And uh, you can uh, do a proverb each day of the month, and good good thing to do there, get some wisdom, amen. And so, been going through the book of uh, um, 1 Samuel, and already on chapter 13, so I'm not sure where you're at in your Bible reading, but it if you haven't started your Bible reading yet, well, today is a good day to start it. Amen. And make sure you're getting into God's Word and praying first and letting Him show you what He'd have you to see as you're trying to live for Him and walk with Him. So, amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. So, thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.